All right, so here's the thing. I wanted to make a little scribbly video wherein I write things. You know, you know, one of those like RSA animate type things. I don't have a really good setup for it, so I'm just gonna talk into the camera while I write things. Just because I really want to do this, you know, just like get it off of my chest. So I've been thinking about the master number 33 because apparently my birthday is that number um, and I'm also a math teacher so numerology is really fun just for seeing patterns and numbers and um, the thing about this particular number is that you can only get it if let's see I'm gonna write something down All right, check it out. Oh my god. All right, here we go. So basically, what I'm showing here... Wow, that camera's really bad. It doesn't matter. Is that for the month, the maximum number that you're going to get is... It's going to be 1 through 12, right? Because the months go 1 through 12. And with numerology, you always add together numbers to get a number less than 10, so 1 through 9. Um, and for this particular master number thing, you have to add just all the individual digits of just the month and day together, and to get 33, that number has to be an 11 or a 22. And then the other number is going to be when you add all four numbers of the year together. And that has to be either 11 or 22 so that the one plus the other equals 33. So you can have, if you can get a month and day of 22, then you could have a year of 11. But to get a month and day of 22, you would need to get a 9, a 9, which equals 18 plus a 2 and a 2. So you could, the biggest number that you could get out of the month, you think about all the numbers you have in a month, 1 through 31, and if you add 3 plus 1, you get 4. 30 is 3 plus 0. 29 is 2 plus 9 is 11. And we're not going to simplify it again. This master number thing is you only add each digit once and you don't simplify a second time. So the highest number you can get from a month is 11. Now let's see, if you get 29, the month uh, that has a 29th, and then if you can get, a, uh, sorry, if you have a date that equals 29, then you need a month that also, when the numbers add up together, equal 11. But there is no 29th month or 92nd month. So I think that that means that only the month and day will always equal only 11, and the year has to equal 22. So my birthday is 7 31 All right, yeah, you can really roughly see that. Now I'll just point to it. Check it out. 7 plus 3 is 10 plus 1 is 11. And then over here, 1 plus 9 is 10, plus 8 is 18, plus 4 is 22. So altogether, this is 11, and this is 22. So now the question is, I've seen somewhere that this number is its the most rare because of this pr particular stipulation of these rules, these arbitrary mathematical rules, right? Um, and I saw somewhere it was like 0.008%. And so I wanted to try to figure out how often this number comes about. So I know now that the year 1984 is one of the master number years because it becomes 22. 1 plus 9 plus 8 plus 4 is 22 before it simplifies down to 2 plus 2, which is 4. So what other numbers in the 20th century also equal a 22? 
Well, so all the numbers are going to start with 1, 9 for the 1900s. Um, and that equals 10, which means that if I need to get to 22, 10 plus what equals 22? 12. So I had 8 plus 4 is 12. But what's the smallest first and largest biggest so I can go in um, increasing chronological order? So if I flip the numbers, I'd have 48, 48, and then 39. And I couldn't do 20, 10. That doesn't make sense, right? Um, so the first number is 1939. And then 1948, 1957, 1966, 1975, 1984, 1993. There you go. So out of all 100 years, it only occurs one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven of those years. And now within one year, how often does it occur? So then now we know that it will occur seven years out of 100 just in this past century. How many times will it occur in one year in one of those years that it occurs? I'm, I'm repeating myself. but So we go back to the day and month, and it has to equal 11. So what are the combinations that give you 11? Starting at the beginning, if the month is January, which is 1, then we have to get to 10. And we have to do that by adding two numbers together to get 10. You can't just have a 10 because that becomes 1 plus 0. <laughs> so it would have to be January 1 plus 9 will equal 10. So January 19th. And 1 plus 9, 2 plus 8, January 28th. We could do 3 plus 7, but there is no 3 plus 7. So January 19th and January 28th. Okay, now in February, when February, the month is 2, then the day has to equal 9. So we can get 9 by doing the 18th and the 27th. And then in February, when it's a 3, we have to get to 8. So that's the 17th, 26th, and no, no 35th. Okay, March... See, you're noticing a pattern now. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a descending number pattern where if this is only a 1, then it's 19. 2 is 18, 3 is 17, so 4 is going to be 16 and 25. 5 is 15, 24, no, 33. Okay, so 6 is 14, 23. So far, the most that we come out with in one month is two. Two times that this number will occur. Okay, but now once we get to July, the month I was born, for seven, we only need to add four. So that could be in the form of 13, 22, and 31. I was double checking because I thought there was a fourth one. Okay, so now in July we have 3, 13, 22, and 31. Now let's go to August. If it's an 8, you have to add 3, so we can add just a 3. We can add 12, 21, and 30. So now August has the most. It has 4. September is 9, so we have to add 2, so that could be 2, 11, and 20. Going back down to only three days in November, September, oh, no, sorry, um, September. October, it's a 10, so we have to add 1. But it's actually not a 10. See, this is the thing. It's a 10, but you add each individual digit, so it goes back to the rules of 1, which was January, so it's going to be the 19th and the 28th. And then November is going to be the same as February, so it's going to be the 18th and the 27th. And then December is going to be the same as March, so it's going to be the 17th and the 26th. So here's my list. Can you see it? So the first number here I'm just going to circle is the month. The second number is the dates in each month. Okay? So like we saw, the pattern is that most months there's two dates except for Ju July, 
Let's see, it's just July with three and August with four. So if I add all those together, I get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So 28 out of 365 days in one year and seven years out of a hundred years. But it's not even as simple as that. See, because when I was figuring it out, I thought maybe I just take these numbers and I divide it and that's it. But that's true. I think all of those things work for this century. But then when I was looking into the 2000s, I wanted to know when is the next 33 going to come up after somebody born in the year 1993. But now, if we go in the 2000s, the first two numbers are 2, 0 instead of 1, 9. And 2 plus 0 is 2, meaning that the other two numbers have to equal up to 20 to be 2 plus 20 is 22, meaning that each number would have to be 10 and 10, and since the highest you can go is 9 and 9, you're not going to have any 33s in the 2000s, in the 21st century. When once we get to the 2100s, that's two plus one is three, so then you need 19, and still, you're not going to have any that fit in there either. So for the next two centuries, you won't have any master number 33s. It's not until, let's see, the 2200s, then you can get 2299. Two plus two is four, plus 9 is 13, plus 9 is 22. And then once you get to 2300, you can have 89 or 2398. And then in 2400, see the numbers are starting to be different. If I have a 6, then I only need 8 and 8. And that could also be 7 and 9 or 9 and 7. And then I'm just going to do one more row in 25. That's a 7, which means that I need a 15 so I can have a, a 6 and 9, a 7 and 8, 8 and 7, 9 and 6. So check out this sort of pyramid staircase thing going on here. See, it went off the page. But so for these first two here, nothing, nothing. One, one year that will give you all 20, 28 days, two years that will give you all, three years, four years. And for us, we're in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So what is the most amount of years that you can get in one century? It's got to be when the last two numbers are the most different which means starting at a 1 and ending at a 9, like something with 19. And if that's the case, that you have a 1 and a 9, it equals 10, and the first two numbers have to equal 12. So that will happen. Let's see, will it happen in 29? No, that's 11. So not until 3,900, and that equals 12. So in 3919... So not until the 39th, it's like the 40th century will we have the most amount of master numbers. So anyway, I thought this was all interesting because there's these um, cyclical patterns that are not just a simple um, really repeating pattern. Every year you always have these dates, but it's, it's a pattern within a pattern within a pattern. And uh, yeah. Just wanted to share that. Isn't that isn't that cool?